Hello and welcome back, I'm Shrike here with another D&D video. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use the map making and presenting tool, Ark and Forge. We have already made a tutorial teaching you how to actually make maps in Ark and Forge which will come up in the card up here or it will be linked in the description. This video is assuming you've already watched that and you've already made a beautiful map. Before we carry on make sure to hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this and then hit the notification bell just next to it so you get notified when I upload another video. Before we actually jump into the computer and into Ark and Forge itself there are a few things you need to know. Firstly the best way to use it is with a two screen setup so having one screen as the M screen as your screen that you can look at and then a second screen for the players which will present fog of war and stuff like that. That way if you want to play online all you have to do is use whatever communication software you're using to share your second screen and then that would just show the bits that you want the players to see and then if you're playing in person there's two ways to set it up one is having one of those fancy tables that has a screen already built into it and then the second way is just having a screen that has a flat back and just laying it flat on the table if you are going to do that make sure to put something on top of the screen like a see-through bit of plastic just to protect your screen because if you're putting minis especially if they're metal minis it can actually damage your screen and we don't want that so now you have your two screens set up let's jump into Ark and Forge and I'll teach you how to use it Right, so we have loaded into Ark and Forge and this is the first screen you'll see. On the right hand side you'll see all the options you have. The first thing you want to do to set up your two screen setup is to go to settings which is just down here and then you'll see this button here that says activate player screen. You need to make sure to click that and then that will make your second screen into the player screen and it off the bat it will show an empty map. If you're having any problems with that it's quite likely that there's something wrong here so all you have to do is make sure that screen 2 is selected. Right so now you have set up your second screen you'll want to go into the cartographer and select the beautiful map that you made in the last video. So I'm going to use the Castle Ravenloft map in this tutorial because you've already seen it and it's got enough depth where I can show you everything that I need to about the tool. So now you've loaded your map you want to go back to the main menu and then you want to click scenario which is just there. So I have loaded it with Fog of War on which is why you can see this black screen here that's what the players are seeing at the moment and it is completely blank so it's not giving any of the map away. So back to the DM's view this is everything that you'll see as you come into this view. Along the top here we're going to go through all of these panels and I'm going to show you exactly what they do. So this is obviously just the time so I am recording it at quarter past five in the evening. This is your Fog of War so this is where you choose what sort of brush type you want. They've only got circle and square at the moment but it looks like they've got some other versions coming soon. This is the density of the brush and then once you've got that selected, so if we select square for example, you can then choose to draw it or erase it and you can reset it back to one square here if you like. There's also a button just here to reset the fog of war if you need to. The next slider along is the day and night slider so you can just drag this down to night time if they end up going to this place at night when you weren't expected them to and you expected it to be day. There is a zoom slider here but you can just use your scroll to scroll in and out as you need to. All of this top bar you can just click and drag and move around as you wish and then just here the plugins that's where you can get rid of the ones you don't want and put in the ones that you do want. So on the left here there is this button here which says toggle player view box. As you click that it will make this box which is the area that you're going to show to the players. You can make it bigger or smaller here you can hide hidden stuff in there and then you can also show grid coordinates so rather than them having to lean over and point at a place they could just say a7 and then you know exactly where it is they're talking about. So this is the player view so I've activated that grid so you can now see that down the left there's numbers and along the top there are letters so they can tell you whereabouts they're looking at. Now also along the left here is the soundscape bar so you can pull that and it will open up your soundscape controller. So the sounds that come with the program are all here in the essential and it's grouped into different areas so there's some desert music here, some dragon type music here and then as we load one up so if we go to dragon battle you'll see that the rest of this area is filled in. There's quite a lot you can do here so there's this mixer module down here so if I wanted the drums to be quieter or louder I could change it just here in the controller and then there's also sound effect modules so if I wanted the dragon to roar I could click there and it will make a sound of a dragon roaring. You can set all of this up before your session easy enough and also on the fly you could add songs or add sound effects from the library. There's also the journal on the left here so if you're using the campaign management part of this program it will all be here and easily searchable. 
And then finally on the right hand side, this area here goes up and down levels that you need to, so up and down floors of a building as you need to. And you can also change the grid settings on the fly by just clicking here. Now I'm gonna show you how Fog of War works. So up in the left here, as we spoke about earlier, you can use these brushes to get rid of Fog of War. So I'm gonna do that first to show you how that works. So I've selected the square brush and I'm gonna reset it back down to one square. I've zoomed into the areas that the players can see just so that I can make it easier for myself to actually remove this with the brush. You can then hold the control key, which we spoke about in the last video, we'll snap it to the grid and then you can reveal the area like so. So now over on the player screen, they can see this room that I have just revealed to them. Like you can see just here. You will have also noticed that the number seven that was in the DM view is missing. That's because I hid it because I didn't want the players to see that and that's just for my reference only. So you can hide it and then on the player screen, it doesn't show it at all. Just to show you what it looked like as a player when I was revealing the screen, this is me revealing the dining room area. So you can see that as I move my brush, it is being revealed to the players. This can be a bit time consuming and take some time, but at the same time, it's not really too much of an issue. You just have to make sure that you don't accidentally go through the walls and make mistakes because you might reveal stuff that you don't actually want to make. So now that you can see that full room, you can imagine putting miniatures on here and having them move about as if it was a normal home drawn map. So I've just added some fire into that fireplace there just so you can see what the lighting effects look like when it's in fog of war. So you can see that it isn't actually passing through the wall behind it or through the fireplace and it's just given a little glow across the table there. Now I'm going to show you how to use dynamic fog instead of the paintbrush style fog. Dynamic fog is the one that I use most of the time and hopefully you'll be able to see why. So the first thing you'll need to do is actually turn on the dynamic fog here. So if that is red that means it's off but you, all you have to do is click there and then it will turn green. To show you how it works I'm going to move it up to this corridor here. So this is what the players will see. You also then need some sort of source which is going to be the center point which reveals the fog of war around the characters. For that I'm just going to use this little bit of fire here. You then need to select it and go to lighting here and then light through fog of war. You'll then see that this little bit of light here is indeed getting rid of the fog of war and as I move it left and right you can see it does that and leaves a shadow behind. Now let's see what that looks like for the players. So here it is this is what it looks like for the players so as I move the fire you'll see that it moves the fog of war with it. This is really good if you've got a long cave or something like that and you're not sure how far the players can actually see. You can use the dynamic fog and it will only show up to so far and then if the enemies are beyond that you know that they're actually hidden in darkness. So looking at this corridor I can show that to you. So as you can see you can't actually see the whole corridor so if I move from left to right it's revealing more of the corridor as we go along and then back to right again it reveals the corridor as we go along. So if there was someone on the furthest left side of the corridor, so over at this door here, and the players come in here, I know that they can't actually see it if they've only got that radius of view. Now back over to the DM screen, just to remind you, you can go into lighting here and then you can set the light, light radius here and then you can set how many squares the players can actually see. So if they could see 10 squares, you can change that to 10. And then if we jump back over to the player screen, you can see that more is revealed. And as I move it, it doesn't take so long to be able to see all the way left and all the way right of this corridor. Now this is the dining room that we were in earlier and around the edge of the dining room there is actually a secret corridor but using the dynamic fog it makes sure it doesn't go through the barriers of the walls so it doesn't reveal that it's a little bit more safe than using the brush tool because with the brush tool you might accidentally brush over the wall and show the hidden corridor behind it now another thing you can decide which way you prefer it is if you turn off the dynamic fog while you have the asset that is going through fog of war when you move it from left to right now it actually doesn't fill in the bit behind it. It keeps it seen through the fog of war. So to show you what that looks like from the player's view, this is the little bit of flame going through the corridor and you'll see that the bit behind it is left revealed. It's up to you which way you want to do it. I usually will do it the first way just to give the players a bit of a sense of getting lost in long cave systems like that. But if it's a small house, you might want to use it the second way I showed you because realistically the player wouldn't actually forget where they had gone. 
Now I actually quite like using tokens and hiding them in the fog of war and then using the dynamic fog and then when the token's revealed that's when I know initiative started if it's a hostile person of course. So in the same corridor I'm going to show you how to do that. So on the right in the fog of war in the area that you can't currently see there is in, that, in fact a token and if the players said that they move forward without stealthing I would move the bit of flame forwards and then at a point you will then see that there is this token revealed. At that point I would know that initiative has started because that is a hostile guard and they have just walked it straight into his field of view. Now the last thing that I want to show you is how easy it is to actually alter the map on the fly. So in this scenario I'm the DM, the players have gone into this temple area here and they have set a bench on fire. At the moment there's no fire on the bench so it doesn't look realistic but I'm going to show you how to very quickly put some fire onto a bench. So from the scenario view you just have to hover over the home menu here and then you go a left to the cartographer. This will load the map in the exact same area you are but now you're in the cartographer. You then just select the type of fire you want, put it on the bench that they've just set on fire, rotate it so that it's in the right position and then if we pop over to the players view you'll see that the bench is now on fire for them. So there you have it that bench is now looking like it's on fire and if you manage to get proficient with that you can just do that really quickly and the players are really impressed because they say that they set something on fire and now it's on fire. So there you have it, there's how you use Arkham Forge actually in the game with a few tips of how I take it to the next level. If you found this useful, please do give this video a like and if you have any questions at all, put them down in the comments I'll make sure to answer every single one. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this and hit the notification bell so that you're notified when I upload a video. But until next time, happy gaming!